Mac Vaughn went to work for my father at Simpson Insurance Agency back in 1970. I wrote insurance there, handled the insurance for him for three or four years, and then Jimmy got sick and he put me on the payroll at the bank, so I sort of wore two hats. It wasn't your typical employer-employee relationship. He really wasn't just my boss. He, he was my best friend, you know, for all that year if I, if I needed advice. So. He, I'd, I'd asked him and he'd, he'd tell me whether it's good or bad, you know, in his opinion. Most of the time he's right, you know. Mac was really like a second father to me. So was my dad. This fella here helped raise me, so. I helped help raise him and it, and it, and it shows. <laughs> <laughs> that bad, huh? One of the things I've always appreciated about Mac was he, he was an incredible storyteller. He is an incredible storyteller. Like this story about electrician Otis Bazell, who did not appreciate the $5 secretary fee. Otis wanted to borrow a little money. Wasn't much and come in. Francis loaned him a little personal loan, put when he wrote it up, $5 secretary fee on there. Otis didn't much like that. He grabbed about it, but he needed the money. He went on, done it. And so about two weeks later, Francis seen Otis up the street, up Shelley's, and hollered. I said they had a couple of light bulbs he needed to change down there. And Otis come down with his ladder and put the light bulbs in. Had his little old tablet where he wrote out bills in his back pocket. He wrote out two dollars for changing the light bulbs and five dollar secretive fee. <laughs> 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 he gave the ticket to Mr. Bowles. <laughs> Mr. Bowles looked and said, I don't know about these blame secretary fees. He said, I'll let check with Francis on that. <laughs> Mr. Bowles went in to Francis said, look at this bill. Said he charged this charge you two dollars <laughs> for changing light bulbs and fired out a secretary fee. <laughs> Francis looked and said, Well, said, I guess what's good for the goose is good for the gander. Just pay. <laughs> Otis got a hundred dollars worth of good out of it, you know. So I learned him to charge me a second tier fee. <laughs> you know, some company is going out of business down there, and they had, I don't know, one of these old liquid, liquid, liquid type copiers. And Francis has been telling me he's going to get me a copy around the insurance office so I wouldn't have to run around the bank every time I need to copy. And I'd looked at that thing, and I seen it had liquid. I knew we didn't want it. But anyway, they had that announced that copy machine. Francis wasn't paying attention up to the time they started to sell. They was running that thing off. And I, I looked over and I seen Francis it was on the second floor. And I seen Francis bidding on it. it wasn't nobody but him and Delta's people. They was working they was working him. I, that place was crowded and I was trying to get over to him quick as I could. And before I got there, they done dropped it on him. But anyway, it come time to load it. We, I, we, I'd carried my truck with me. We got, it was on that second floor and and, and uh, we had to have some help to get it down. So I, I was down on the strong end. I was strong at that time. I had one end of it myself going down some concrete stairs. And we got about halfway down that stairs. They had, they had, had old boy dressed like a Texas cowboy, had his hat and boots and everything on. He, he was on the other end of that thing, him and two other guys. But anyway, when I got about halfway down that step, that liquid oil come out, it spilt out of that bottom of that copper, what made it work, and it slid, it run down on my feet, and my, I hit the top of the ceiling. Next thing I know, I was down on the bottom. And it drug that fella down with him, a cowboy down, and hit him on the toe and broke his toe. <laughs> <laughs> they had to carry him to the hospital. That thing was, that thing was all the faces down there. And, and Francis didn't get a copier. And he didn't get no, I didn't get no copier. But anyway, that that Delta, we got ready to leave, and that guy asked Francis, "What do you want to do with that copier machine?" <laughs> Friends, I don't want to ever see that copy machine. <laughs> he was sick of it. He gave about $150 for it. But, but, but while that cowboy was dragging that foot, and they had to carry him to the emergency room get his toe. I don't know where they said it anyway. Friends had to pay the bill on it. <laughs>
Oftentimes, Mac would tell his stories, and the subject was my father. He had some hilarious stories about his times uh, with my dad. And it wasn't like we were being disloyal at all because these very same stories he would tell my father. Francis come around there one day and said, I, I'm, I'm going to see my boy. I said, I ain't seen him in a month or so. I said, I just got to go see him. He said, I'm going to put you in charge of the loan. I said, I said just, just don't make no bad loans. And I said, okay. I said, I won't make no bad loans. Well, he hadn't been gone two hours. This, this woman come in. She, uh, she, uh, I know she was bogus as a two dollar bill, but I didn't want to tell her no. You know, I just, I just, just didn't want to say no right off. And I said, I got, she wanted to buy a new Italian auto car. At that time, it was twelve, thirteen thousand dollars to buy one. I got figuring out what, what, what am I going to tell her? You know, I just didn't want to say no. And I said, well, I, I said, the only way I make this loan, you, you're going to have to come up about six thousand dollars to pay down. She said, all right, said, I, I just cashed in a policy. She said, I got 6000 in my purse. <laughs> oh, my. So, so I was trapped. I had to make the loan, you know, after I told her I would. And, but anyway, about everything went on, about six, eight weeks, two months. Francis had always come around to the office. He had to go see somebody about quitting time. He said, come on, we've got to go barber and pick up a car. I said, okay, which, you know, just normal for me, you know, <laughs> as every day's work, you know. We got out, out north of Middleton going across the bottom, and I said, he had that note laying over there. I said, I reached over and got it. I said, who, who are we going after? Anyway, I, put, I opened that note up, and it's her, you know. And I said, I was just messing with Francis. I said, uh, I said, Francis said, Said, look like anybody have more sense than loan this woman any money. <laughs> he, he just turned loose and turned with, I know it, Max. <laughs> said, I got so much on me, I don't even know whether I'm going or coming. <laughs> so I never did tell him that wasn't my loan. But we, we got out of it. We, we picked it up and sold it and made money on it. That's probably only one of the few repos we ever made money on. <laughs> but I never did tell him. <laughs> Well, I did tell it at a meeting one time. He knew it before, before he passed away. So. Former Middleton High School basketball coach Marvin Day had an impressive record at Middleton High School, which included several state tournament titles. But he only played golf with my father once. Yes, but anyway, Mac Vaughn tells you why. Frank, of course, if you go off for Francis, you're going to eat before you come home. Mar Marvin thought we'd be coming back home after we played, and we got through about... Four or five o'clock, it's get almost dark. But anyway, Francis wanted to go to Jackson. He wanted to go to Jackson and eat, feed us. And so, which, of course, me and Leon, we knew we weren't going to get home early. <laughs> Mar Mar <laughs> Marvin didn't know that, but we we went on up there and we went to the steak place up there and we got through eating. Francis grabbed his billfold and he didn't didn't have no billfold to pay us out, so we got we got paid out. But anyway. We was headed back towards uh, South Jackson. Me and Leon knew where we was going. We, you know, we knew we was going back to the golf course. <laughs> Marvin didn't know that. We got up to the South Wife, and Mar Francis went to the left. You know, Marvin said, "Francis, you need to cut off there." <laughs> we was going back to Penson. You know, friend, no, I will go back down and see if I can find that billfold. <laughs> but At we, night. we got, we got back down there. It's seven, eight o'clock, and uh, we got back down there. And, Guy that run the golf course, he lived there. The manager lived on on the court on the golf court side side, and uh, he done went to bed. Francis got him up. I don't know if anybody turned in a billfold, and and he said, "No, we hadn't. Ain't nobody reported one." Said, "Y'all welcome to go out there and look around if you want to." So we we got one of his guys. We ride up down fairways, looking pitch black, looking for that billfold, and. And finally we, finally we got back up there and he had some other golf cart. We got looking at the golf carts and he found it where it fell down behind the seat. But anyway, Francis went up there and thanked the guy and, and uh, <laughs> Marvin done two hours late being home. <laughs> 
his wife didn't even know where he was. <laughs> but we we got got back in the car and got plumb down to the road. And Fred said, "I just got to go back up there and tell that fella why I had to have that bill phone." <laughs> so we we got, we got back up there and Francis got to get the fella up again. You know, he said, "I just Francis said I just want to tell you why I had to have that bill phone." Said. Right there is my son, you know. <laughs> there's my oldest son, Mike, and there's Tim, and there's my baby girl. He was going to. The... Oh, 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 Marvin sitting in the car said, I'll never go off with him no more. <laughs> but, but, yeah, but, but me and Leo, was just, we was having fun out of Marvin, you know. We, you, was, you were just watching him. Yeah, we, we was having more fun out of him. <laughs> We were, we, cause we knew we knew Francis was gonna find that bill before we before we went home. You know? One of my father's good friends was Buddy Taylor from Pocahontas, or as Mac Vaughn would call it, Pocahontas, Tennessee. Buddy and my father were always teasing one another, and this memorable story, just to set it up, involved instant coffee. You know, the kind that when you add water, it heats up automatically. Uh, well, let's just say that Buddy did not know about that hot water option that my father had installed on the water fountain at the Bank of Middleton. Oh yeah, but that was that was one of the best ones Francis ever pulled. Uh, Buddy, Buddy was coming in. He was he financing cars through Francis. He bring in paper to get the paper fixed up. And Francis had a on the on the cold water machine. He had had him run hot water through that the, through the. Uh, the, the, the water drink fountain. drink fountain. and Anyway, the buddy come in, left his papers there getting them fixed and told Francis, come on, let's go get some coffee. And and uh, Francis said, no, just keep your seat there. I, I'll, I'll make you some coffee. And he, he, had, he was using instant coffee then, so Francis got a couple of cups, set them on the desk and put some of that down in there, the coffee down the cup, and went around that cooler. <laughs> Buddy's right, right on his heels, and Francis started running that water in there, in that coffee, and Francis, Buddy, no, 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 don't want no damn, damn ice coffee, I don't want that. Francis, oh, I, I got this new kind of coffee, he said, it'll heat itself. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> he went back in there and sat down, and, down a, down a minute, and Buddy, and Buddy's cup was sitting over to him, and Buddy, Buddy reached over and stuck his finger over in that cup. Damn, he said, it's already working. <laughs> but anyway, anyway, so he went on and drank the coffee, and Buddy, Buddy got, he was asked and went up to New Lear's. He had to store up to, up there trying to find out some of that new, new coffee that would heat itself. <laughs> He had a sister work at Kroger. He went down. <laughs> he went down there hunting that cow. <laughs> they finally, finally, buddy found out Francis doesn't pull the trigger. He stayed mad at Francis for two or three weeks. What he might just speak to him. <laughs> he had. Uh, he's always pulling practical jokes on me, you know. And uh, Miss Miss Kirk out here, she her. She had, I guess, a dementia. She got in that, but anyway, she. She got to imagine that Horace was running around on her, and some, somewhere in her mind she got it. Francis was setting Horace up with a girlfriend, <laughs> and she called she called down the bank one day and just reamed him out, you know, about about lining Horace up with a girlfriend. <laughs> she, she she reamed him over real good, and one of the girls around the bank told me about it. And, I waited about 30 minutes and I called around there on the bike, I mean, on the phone. I told Francis, I said, Miss Kirk's around here wanting to talk to you. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only time I, in, in the whole time I've ever seen him silent. I mean, he just sat there a minute on the phone. <laughs> he sat there, seemed like a minute. He finally said, will you tell Miss Kirk I'm not gonna talk to her? <laughs> Coming up in our next video, Unfortunately, Mac Vaughn does not have any stories about the Middleton High School Tiger Marching Band, but he does have some funny stories about his longtime friend, Leon Webster, in the next edition 
of Middleton Memories.